Shantamani, welcome to Kochi Miseris and the city of Kochi on this balmy afternoon. Uh, <clears throat> as you look at your sculpture, mm -hmm. sculpture installation, uh, we assumed, or one assumed, this was historically part of Vaspin mm -hmm. One of you assumed it was an installation meant for the Miseris exhibition. Uh, how do you react to it? Ah. Uh, I feel very assured uh, to know that, that one feels that it belongs here because often when you make a work for a site-specific um, you know, uh, exhibitions, um, there's, a, there's always a challenge whether it works or not. So when you say that, I feel very comforted. And for me, I've uh, first time done uh, outdoor sculpture. Um, my work always remained in the gallery premises, so I've been warned. And I knew, especially the kind of work that I do with charcoal and the issues of carbon that I address. Um, I, I knew that once I come out of the gallery space, it has much more direct way of interacting with public. So that was one of the big challenges I had with the sculpture. So uh, for me, uh, uh, it's, it's quite assuring to know that uh, you feel that it is part. Um, then there are also other dynamics to it that I am sort of uh, realizing when I see it because uh, every time I've come in to see the Kochi Biennial, this is my fourth visit after it uh, got inaugurated, um, there's always people interacting with it. So it's not just uh, a sculpture which is like, it's not an artwork just make, making meaning but it also kind of creates a context where people just hang around, interact with the forms knowingly and knowingly and then there is also this kind of tactile surfaces that they sort of react to, touch, feel. So um, it's, it's, a, it's an added uh, advantage or uh, aspect to explore in future. Uh, so I would like to take this uh, forward. Uh, I used to work with charcoal and paper, both uh, of, um, you know, kind of uh, fragile material and both uh, the extreme process of uh, the plant product. Uh, and I felt um, somewhere sort of it mimics who, who I think I am, you know, you sort of appear or I, as bold and out there and then at the same time you are also fragile, so this kind of uh, extreme things that exist in women um, was a, something that I really explored. Um, here I decided that for me the charcoal always stood as a great metaphor for my time, for me I always want to uh, respond to the time that I am in. And uh, that's a big uh, concern that I have, whether my work really talk about the time that I live. Um, so, in a way, charcoal is a great metaphor because it's neither a tree nor an ash and it's in between. It's just exhausted and it's still there, you know, uh, trying to come together to make a last statement. And that's a very assuring and um, positive thing that I look at. Uh, so when I did the, uh, the sculpture, I was looking for another material that can actually correspond with the kind of idea that I work with. And um, I felt cinder was a great material. It's a, it's a byproduct of carbon after it's exhausted and it's a waste material. So it sort of comes together. Once How again. did you conceive of it after you uh, read Jitish's curatorial note that uh, came to your mind? Um, <clears throat> for me, the work goes slightly beyond uh, uh, Kochi Biennial because I've always been interested in uh, the element of backbone uh, because it's sort of uh, different components coming together. It's open-ended, at the same time it holds the structure. Uh, so I like that kind of uh, uh, two ways of reading it. It's strength at the same time, you know, fragile, you know, fragmented. Uh, I quite like that element and um, I've been doing this structure of backbone. I've been doing a lot of drawings and paintings of that. In 97 I once I did a lot, very large painting of backbone. Um, that was just after um, a surgery, uh, a C-section that I did during delivery where um, they used to inject anesthesia through your spine. And I felt that I felt the bone, I felt my backbone. And then uh, uh, that sort of remained in my mind, that experience of 
knowing that it, it is alive and it exists in your structure uh, sort of remained uh, as an experience for a very long time. Uh, I, uh, and during that time was also in, in the 97 and 2000, uh, we often talked about science coming to an end. Um, there's no way we can go beyond in terms of knowing and uh, suddenly the new discoveries uh, and technology especially nanotechnology or gamma imaging or um, even uh, MRI for instance and the way they kind of uh, uh, virtually dissect your body to understand it in, in a kind of virtual sense to, to tricks you in um, sort of excited or, or brought in a new perspective towards our understanding what uh, our bodies are about. So I felt that we are going to be put back into examination to table to look again to see the possibilities and to understand, you know, to enhance our perspectives of, of who we are. So that is the time I actually made, I, I felt our bodies and then the parts of bodies are uh, enormous. In, in, in context of nanotechnology or MRI and then uh, there's so much to understand so they became mammoth in my head so that's how I made uh, Backbone and second time I made Backbone was in 2010 uh, that I did an entire journey of Ganga from beginning to end uh, where um, I you know we often talk about Ganga being the backbone of our culture so uh, throughout the journey I felt this kind of fluid water flowing in the meat of the sand bed and sort of this image remained in my mind for, uh, throughout my journey. But then I, uh, I felt that by making it in charcoal I kind of recontext the entire issue of Ganga, bringing the present issues to it. So that was the first uh, kind of sculptural image that I made of Backbone. Uh, when I was invited to be part of Kochi Muzris, I felt um, if, you know, the minute I expand the scale, I knew the kind of possibilities of the way we read the material and the way their shape can be read. Um, and I knew it will go very well with uh, the conceptual notes, so that's how we decided that we work on this particular, uh, you know, form. And, uh, uh, for me, uh, it the scale sort of takes away from the reference of backbone. Uh, it sort of it can be read in different way. If you actually if you sort of elevate a little bit more and then the perspective, then it looks like a dead centipede. Um, it, it, it's all it's, uh, uh, like turned up, and um, it's also kind of uh, there's a kind of an aspect of um, uh, many legs and these things, and then. Uh, in fact, I called it earlier, uh, we couldn't change the title, but I had called it Untold Stories of a Millipede which crossed the ocean. So, in a way, it connects to many legs, uh, many forms, many cultures, many things also connect to the river, you know, water. You know, the form also, it's kind of fluid and it is part. So, uh, I would love to finally put it somewhere where it's close to water, to the, you know. so. Um, so that is what I was interested in and I knew that it can be read in multiple levels. Uh, it's also interesting to see the way, uh, the kind of history that is layered in, in especially Fort Kochi and uh, uh, somewhere it sort of echoes those elements of, you know, like you see Jew Town, you see different parts where different kinds of communities existing and then they all at the same time make a kind of coherent community and then a, a cultural vibrance. So I, I felt that it will go very well with that uh, concept note. How so. long did you take to put it all together mm. and where did you source this material from? Okay. Uh, it took around, once we sort of finalized in terms of what we're going to do, um, it took three months to finish the work with a, with a team uh, of five. Uh, of, of course it's got a backing of cement and uh, you know, steel armature. So the construction community sort of uh, got involved in it. Um, more than that, I think uh, the material is available in a sense. It's a kind of a waste that is generated out of... Earlier we would only see it uh, in railway yards because of uh, coal. Uh, you know, uh, in, and uh, now you, you see them in mass, in, in a big amount, because um, coal is still used in energy sector. 
so this is dead waste and it there's no use to it um it's it's kind of the only advantage is it's lightweight because it's porous uh so uh, it's mostly used in construction to fill the gaps the sunken slab so that's the only use i believe i've i've seen till now because it's weight uh, uh, the unit because of steel and uh, cement uh, the bigger ones are around 450 kilos and small ones probably around 40 40 with the smallest one yeah, yeah so it varies uh, so in a way it's a dead mass and then it is it's available in construction you know material yards and then um, and uh, i thought it was so there's another added layer that comes in of this waste that gets recycled so so uh, would you say that your uh, creative impulses your urges to create something uh this deeply historical nature draws you draw your inspiration from the historicity of uh, our civilization culture or politics uh, whatever you have mm-hmm. Oh that's a very you know vast area to kind of uh, look at uh, um yes it does come from all those uh, you know um layers but at the same time uh, uh for me to be at this point here and then to be part of this kind of uh, culture that we are in because you can take 300 years of culture you know history and say we were more liberated or more we had a freedom or we had so many things but then i also come from a very particular uh, kind of a culture practice or a context and, and also an economy so um, my journey was always about questioning that and uh, for me i am very very aware of um, uh, the kind of multiple uh, practices and beliefs existing within our own small nook and corners of any part of india I'm not only talking about multicultural as in, in an in a international you know kind of a, a phenomena but I'm also talking about even uh, even you go into a smallest village you have those pockets which are very different and has a different beliefs and different practices and different ways of living and even food habits um vegetarian or non vegetarian whether you call it caste or you call it you know economy you know class whatever but um, this I was very aware from my very young age and for me uh, in within that kind of uh, uh, structure we we as indians probably we also tend to sort of uh, try to f- find what is that we are in an in a larger context as this geography you know um, so that's something that bothered me a lot so um, often i felt that we we these cultures live in different layers and then you there's no vertical sections that you can actually of interaction so within your own small 10 5 kilometers of small vill- village or even a city uh, you can be quite uh, culture shocked in different layers and then even to kind of uh, navigate between these uh, practices um uh, somewhere uh, uh, needs re-questioning and re-addressing your own self so that was that has been uh, mainly my preoccupation throughout my art practice as a woman and as a as an artist uh, i always put myself physically there and uh, questioned it and sort of uh, understood what it means to be in that stru- structure and also to try and understand or to kind of see a bigger picture that's been my practice and um, so that's how i i sort of navigate whether it is a small town uh with different uh, language or it's a big metropolis or a global structure that's how i see and i i sort of practice um probably my work comes from that but so could you add to this uh we went through this discussion here mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. art and politics uh do you think uh, art is a political act Yeah this is what has been kind of um, uh, kind of a dilemma that uh, we as practicing artists go through because uh, I do understand and I agree with many things that they are discussing at this point of time you know that what how does a, a mega event like this lens in terms of uh, globally or what does it do locally or uh, the impact of it and we also see the kind of impact that it is 
that has it's made in Kochi or uh, uh, am I lending myself into this kind of a spectacle um, you know okay you might feel good 10 people taking pictures of themselves with the work but then after a point when there are thousand people who are doing that then you wonder what kind of meaning that it is lending to to and does it create a certain kind of a dialogue or an interest or introspect or does it just become another a Facebook situation yeah so this these things are definitely troubling but then at the same time when I uh, I looked at the artist uh, presentations there you know uh, uh, both artists who presented uh, today and yesterday uh, when you look at them there's a very intense personalized uh, journey that they go through now um, can you remove it from uh, if they say I am not a political artist can you remove the the political context that is existing within their work which you can't you know because we all are again you know part of the social uh, fabric and then there are ways where you also react to things around you your practices whether you are conscious or not conscious there are many layers that comes into the work or do you really think that somebody who is going to say that I am a political activist but use art as a medium, uh, you will negate the, the, the visual aspect of it, the language aspect of it? No, you can't. So it's a very thin line that you actually kind of um, navigate between. Um, I am quite happy that, that both extremes exist, you know, that I actually uh, use my art to sort of explore who I am and the larger context that it also sort of talks about the, the uh, cultural and the political situation that I exist. So that is part of, um, uh, that's part of the uh, enigma probably of the art practice but at the same time um, the kind of conflict that we hear in this kind of seminar uh, or also I feel often the conflict that exists beyond the uh, the the threshold of the of the of the practice, you know. Um, then, uh, am I aware of of that to kind of to use that to my strengths and then to be somebody who can um, play the game or the role of culture practitioner, or will I remain somebody just being somebody who will explore just my own self? Is something that depends on each individual artist, but. Um, yeah, there is a there are different uh, you know sides to it. One has to sort of explore. Something which I'm curious about uh, the the process of creating the artistic process, the creative process. Uh, when you create as an artist, an object of art or a work of art, what is it that uh, goes through your mind? Uh, in, in the sense, the, will your will your art, would your uh, art have a higher social responsibility, or do you think uh, what you create should or shouldn't have a transformative role mm. once it is out of the public domain? Mm. Does it uh, come into the picture when you start creating something? I, I am really bothered uh, uh, to know whether my work has any relevance just uh, uh, apart from the action that happens in the studio but then uh, that is something that is uh, part of my consciousness and then probably that is an exercise that happens um, in terms of thought process for me um, but then um, the challenge of being in front of a blank canvas is something else because all that thought or a feeling has to translate and then there is a language and the language actually uh, has its own way of lending itself to make this meaning um, and that has a different challenge altogether you know it, it has to come you have to listen to it to 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 come therefore there, there needs to have that you know a transformation for it to exist, otherwise it cannot exist. It can just be uh, writing on a wall, you know. So, uh, you often, if I am, especially my own, my own uh, experience has been that if I am really too concerned about being socially relevant in my, in my action, uh, in the action of making work, uh, I'll be miserably failed because uh, I will not be able to even, you know, draw a line which has 
a relevance. If I have to make that, I have to accept that that action has its own premises and ways of coming and then you have to indulge in it to bring it together. So, yeah, I think uh, that is the transformation. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks very much. Thank you.